Hey guys, Titanrope here, bringing you a 1v1 today. We are on Twin Beaches. I'm say spawning in the south as Enemy, that's going to be a bit of a confusing name. Playing as Africa Corps. I'm selected on the battle route currently, starting out with two Panzer Grandiers. On the top side is Armoured Top Hat. The British forces going for Indian Artillery. Going for one section into a dingo. Map, yeah, Twin Beaches, and uh, in terms of ranks, I'm top hat around 80 and enemy in the mid 40s. So, yeah, dingoes, you know, pretty safe option against Africa Corps. Obviously, if they've gone for a Krautschutzen. Ooh, left this capture circle too early, whoops. Can, you know, bully that thing around. You're expecting a 250 at some stage, which the dingo typically does pretty well against. Just in general, it's a bit of a powerhouse. So enemy coming up here with two units. Capping out on the edge with the section. It does have the sappers there, close to the dingo, so we can repair it. Of a stalemate, getting some repairs on the dingo in the meantime. E green versus section on the edge. Looks like they're going to avoid each other though. Quite often these days I've been going more for this mini point instead of this, like as I'm doing my capping. Just because sometimes, like with the way the cutoffs work on this map, this can actually like connect you to your fuel, like through this path, if they go for your cutoff. I find this to be generally like a more high value. Okay, we mine up from the Panzer Pies from enemy on the VP there. Right, like it's more likely to hit a squad than the dingo. So I think maybe I'm a top hat could have come in closer. Now that's just like a one on one. Maybe a bit earlier, like, you know, before you expect snares to come online. Just get in there up close and personal with the dingo and start ripping in. Nullify that cover by getting in closer. Because, uh, yeah, you got to take advantage before the snares unlock. Let me have a look, see if we can uh, see when... Yeah, so he doesn't have fire support elements, so he doesn't have sneers yet. As you can see, it's still safe to do so at this timing, but this is around the timing we are. It's probably a bit too late, but before this. So no 250 early on. I think that's fine, you know, if you see your opponent's gone for a dingo, and you're not planning to get the uh, combat half tracks upgrade, giving them extra health and armor, then yeah, early 250s can be a bit of a liability against the dingo. Goes for some early Panzergas, though it can you know, obviously work quite well. You can hit Panzergas in a 250 and chase this down and kill it before that six minute mark when they might be expecting something like that to happen. So you can catch them off guard in that, with that move, which is something I do quite often. Either way, you know, Panzer gets inside the 250 and chase it, or upgrade it to the 250 slash 9 and chase it and kill it. And give you a bit of an edge early on as Africa Corps. Plus, I can give you some stopgap healing. And 250 as well, it's not too bad. So, if uh, KD's, you know, going alright. Oh boy, late retreat here from Armored um, Top Hat. Oh, what was that? Oh, that's unbelievable. Yeah, I was going to say, if that gets away, that is the luckiest section I've ever seen. 
And yeah, I guess finish it off. So a bit of a rough start here for Armour Top Hat. Struggling a bit on map control. Losing that unit early. Maybe hasn't done quite enough damage with the dingo to this point. In fact, feeling is about to pop out. It looks like he's using some healing from the dingo. That's good. We have vehicles available in reserve. Did he use? No. Piling sandbags as ordered. Attack mounted flak feeling is ready. Here comes flak feeling. Because enemy did go for that extra Panzer Jaeger earlier on. Doesn't actually have the manpower to call in the half track at this stage, which you often would have. Gotta hit both of these and the call in at the same timing. But that can be fine as well if you don't want a Panzer Jaeger call in. You want to go for like an AT gun or the LEIG call in, which uh, incredible value. Just delay it by a couple minutes. And even on a map like Twin Beaches, where the LAG might be at its weakest out of all 1v1 maps, it's still very good on the map. It's just so much range, you know. It's going to be an AT gun for enemies, not taking any chances. And Armour Top Hat, you can see, he hasn't gone for any Humbers. I expect maybe a Humber from about the 6 minute mark-ish, maybe a bit earlier. Oh, this is a really deep cap though from enemy. Could backfire on him here, Stuart's coming in. Squad's quite low. Just gonna look for the white. That's almost certain to go down. Nothing in the vicinity. Be really careful about capping. All the way next to your opponent's base like that. That is crazy risky. Oh boy, Vickers though over here. Decrewed and stolen. Maybe as it's getting out of the building, it goes down. The T guns are there. Zones the Stuart. It's two shots on as well. Probably an attack round, that second one. My top hat does have quite a lot of munitions. AT rifles are not the best against the flak feeling, though, you know, if they put inside the building and kind of hide around here, jump in and out, can stall out for a decent amount of time. So it is an option. But yeah, if you've got a bunch of squads that can be upgraded, got to spend that munitions early on. Use so much more firepower. And, you know, you got to take advantage of it, because if, you know, with riflemen... You have to pay to get bars. But if you don't have to pay to get your weapon upgrade, then that can give you a bit of a power spike and turn the tide. Not relevant in this matchup, but can be relevant in DAC versus USF if you get a LMG and they're going for like a no bar strat. Make the difference. So a mine gets spotted coming up here. It does have a sweeper, but it's out on the far edge. On the top out. A little bit behind on VPs at this stage. T gun a little bit off to the side actually. Doesn't get an opportunity to shoot and takes quite a lot of damage here. Because he's inside the building. He's getting baited in. Setting up the AT gun now, Panzeagers. Looking for the kill. Oh, Stuart gets the flak. AT gun setting up. It's the kill. Not sure if he had any upgrades. I don't think I saw a commander sticking out of that. I don't know if he had the smoke canisters, but there certainly was an opportunity to use them. And I think if you see your Africa Corps opponent has got an AT gun up. And you're not going to rely on the command, Stuart, for the vision. I probably recommend getting this auto repair smoke canisters, especially if you only got one sample for repairs on top of that. Smoke's so helpful, trying to force them into attack rounds and attack rounding in a situation like this. There's almost no chance. It's 
it's going to land, right? It's going to like, collide with one of these walls. Essentially making this impossible to kill. Enemy almost mucked it up though, that AT gun positioning. A little bit slow setting it back up after everything got suppressed. Just about allowed the Stuart to dance through there without dying. I'm going to go for another Stuart now, armored top hat. And here comes a flame tank from here. You don't see these too often. You have an AT gun on the field as well for armored top hat. Which is smart. Typically you need AT guns like hand out range tanks, just too ineffective. Getting suppressed by the flat feeling to uh, work in most situations. Let me go out of position with this AT gun. Goes down that brend up section, tearing them to shreds. Flame tank rolling forwards here. A little bit late on the retreat here with the sappers. AT gun's back there, lands one shot. Don't know if he's got AT grenades yet. If he does, he hasn't used it. Flame tank's looking for the kill, but here comes the Stuart. That goes down to the AT rifles. T gun setting up again. Flame tank getting very low here. Oh, and he's stuck a little bit going around the corner. Just survives. Panzer Pyro's dying on retreat there. These sections are so good at attack moving at long range. I respect that. Comes up with a 250 though to tow away the AT on this really good play from enemy. Quick thinking. Very smart. He's not a manual base builder as well. He's put this right in front of here. I think that's a double click position. I think on this map as well, you, you get quite a lot of value from putting one of your base structures out here. It really helps you like reinforce stuff. So I think it's a real shame not to manually base build at least your first two buildings, like one out on to this side, so troops can reinforce coming out this way. And same story coming out this way. Checking two it's buildings on the It just vehicle as requested. Okay, pillage. Don't see that selected too often. But maybe I'm a top hat. Feels like he's behind on resources. And that control's not looking good for him. So he's wants some more. It's more important than anything else right now. KD on oh, bang even. Lost. I think in terms of wipes as well, it's pretty close. You can see enemy has a much larger army right now in terms of population. I suppose enemy did steal this, so it's not just wiping something that's turning it over. So it's a pretty big swing. And has also saved some resources. By going for the command tank means that he doesn't have to tick up for a lot longer. So, so essentially saving a lot of tech resources and putting them into a unit. Even if that unit's not that good. Okay, this is good from um, Top Hat. I think you're a little bit behind like this if you can avoid losing the piece. How you try to recover that's very important. <laughs> Here I am thinking, oh man, you know, you could put a recovery vehicle and salvage some of these. I don't think, think enemy's going to do that though, but... Recovery vehicle's on the brain. Enemy forces have taken our territory. And if you're up against Africa Corps opponent, in this case we know, we've seen the flame tank, so we know that he's up against armor support, but... If you don't know that, maybe, you know, I've got, gone for battle for espionage and killing the wrecks quite important so they can't salvage weapons out of them. So definitely something to look out for, those tank wrecks. I suppose he could salvage, but this is 
not as important to kill the Rex. It's a pretty minor boost compared to getting Braider on oh, your Panzer Grenadiers for the rest of the game. But so far, a bit of a slow start for the uh, P3 flame tank. It is kind of squishy. Second AT gun for armor top pad, I think that's a fine choice. Should provide enough defense. Man, can be a little bit awkward if you don't have indirect fire to deal with these AT guns. He's putting up his next piece of tech. Edge. This is a good way to use your flame tank. Try to go wherever the anti tank guns are least likely to be. Don't have to worry about running on these ramps though, a little bit. Might not want to drive through them. In this case, maybe he's got a pretty good idea of if mines have been planted there or not, but. Gotta think about that. T gun finds the angle. These guys were maybe faking a grenade, cancel it. Mine gets spotted there by the Panziagas and detonated. There's armor top hat. The enemy has a tactical advantage over us. The upgrades. You have command points available. Here comes the flame tank, AT gun, right there. Oh boy, he's a bit slow getting away with the steward. It's going to survive though. The AT gun doesn't quite get the second shot in. Very close call though. But yeah, the AT gun's shutting down the P3 flamer. He's now got a massive surplus of fuel. As often happens with Africa Corps. He's not putting this on... Uh, we have taken the advantage. Use the handbrake mode. Don't think doing all right there. Victory point maybe the part of the reason why flame tanks are well, not as good in this game as they are in Code Two is that they don't like leave a pool of flame behind to slowly do damage over time. So, yeah. Take cover. Shit. We're taking cover. Some bit hard to use. You must go. Top out about to tick under half his VPs remaining. Shit. Shit. But the double AT guns really locking things down here. Like the final stage of tech is up for armor top hat, pretty close to a tank now. And this is where Brits can really start to take over Africa Corps. Looks like enemy has gone for the uh, combat half tracks upgrade eventually and gone for a mortar half track. Definitely helps against the AT guns, especially the incendiary shot, pretty good, helping decrew them. But I feel you kind of need two to deal with AT guns. Like one alone doesn't decrew it fast enough. It's Maybe tanks will be see that. Well, it looks like enemy is investing a lot into armored reserves. So maybe we're not going to see another one of these. Like I was thinking maybe he'd get another mortar half track. Maybe because he's gone for like some kind of infantry or team weapon calling. But if he's gone for armored reserves, he probably wants to call in a tank. So we're probably not going to see a second mortar half track. And here comes the Matilda. Second AT gun coming online for enemy though. So I think it's a wise choice. Enemy the line. Right. Nonetheless, 
Oh, didn't jump out of the building fast enough. Armored Top Hat attacking it with the AT guns, I'm pretty sure. And that helped provide enough damage to kill it just before the machine gun was about to jump out. We're losing grasp of them. The enemy forces are dwindling. 250 points grenade. Play there for Armored Top Hat. And now the population situation has evened out. So the enemy actually making use of the mid truck on the front lines here, healing some stuff up, avoiding having to retreat. And we've got some Gurkhas on the field for Armour Top Hat. I played them with the SMGs, which is a little bit surprising. I think overall, like, Close quarters, specialists, like SMG Gurkhas, kind of came out quite bad from the TTK changes. So they didn't get any buffs. So now they take kind of too much damage when trying to close the distance. And then drop too many models, so once they're in close quarters, they just end up dying too fast without doing enough in return. Okay, he does have the commander upgraded on the Stuart now. Look for that quite late. You see him stick his head out. Oh! You see, because the sweep was hidden away there, he was still mid repairs. That's why he's taking so much damage. I've seen in my video, he still repair up to like an eight ish range away. So he's still going to be taking that extra damage while their vehicle is about eight range away as well, you know? So you've got to be much quicker cancelling your in-combat repairs once the engineers start getting shot at. I was very lucky that it survived. Oh, mistake here for Armour Top Hat. The T-Guns weren't reversing, so now I have to spin around to start firing back here. And that essentially means Armour Top Hat losing this engagement when maybe he could have decrewed one of these AT guns. He's a bit sharper on it. Uses the V1 ability though, it gets interrupted. Pretty common, hard to get value out of that Panzer Green V1 when you constantly have to dodge a grenade and it gets cancelled, right? I can see enemy just throwing it out there, hoping it's going to work. P3 is quite a bit faster than Matilda. Shots coming in here from the side. Just coming down the hill. P3 though. Getting into AT gun range. This AT gun now. A little bit compromised in its positioning. More to half track landing some hits. Gets the D crew. And Jaeger's right there, they could kill it off. Oh, he's trying to shoot the infantry. Flaming again. Oh, the P3's hanging on by a thread. D crews it again. The AT guns are pushed up. Matilda bouncing the shots, though. Can attack this with the Panzer as well. Don't have to just rely on the AT guns. I'd like to see everything. Brought in there to attack that AT gun down. Ouch. Big loss for armored top hat and at a bad timing just before the tiger arrives as well. Let's have a look. We've got in terms of upgrades. Absolutely nothing. Oh, puff and combat half tracks. Enemy. Armored top hat is going for the vehicle training. Has got infantry training as well. Doesn't have the team weapon training though, which is very good when you're fighting against the tiger. Big push going on, meanwhile. Enemy brings in the loiter, zones the Stuart, might take another pass. T3 Flamer and Mortar Half Track go down, but so is the Matilda. Oh, he's slow getting out of the circle. And that loiter saving the day there for enemy who just took a crazy amount of losses. But if he can hold on to this AT gun, 
he's still all right. I think one section has died from the top head as well. He used to have three or four. Here comes the tiger. Some mine down here. Big losses on the top hat though. A T gun down and Matilda now. I think that Matilda could have got out of the uh, circle a bit faster, if I'm honest. The mines down here, Tiger's looking for the white. Hands are green in the retreat path as well. Wow, how did that tiger shot do zero damage just there? That's the tank trap. Just a couple shots, decides to back away. Yeah, I do think that's one of the best counters to the tiger, as Brits. If you can go for that team weapon training and just two regular six pounders. Extra health stops them getting from decrude. Hits the target too often, and extra rate of fire is also very handy. Given its durability. But we'll see what armor top hat goes for next. All things considered, you know, I feel like the VP situation could be quite a bit worse for Armored Top Hat to this point. And at this stage of the game, if you're fighting against Africa Corps, it depends if you need the fuel or not, but they probably don't, as we can see enemies hundreds and hundreds spare. So if you also don't need fuel as the allied player, you might want to consider more aggressively going for like the muni points rather than worrying about their fuel makes maybe the double high fuel, uh, high munis up in this corner more important part of the map ok, command steward there making use of its mark vehicle ability 25% extra damage plus 25% penetration pretty handy when you're up against the tiger Relatively expensive though. <laughs> Considering how long it lasts. But yeah, worth it if it can especially contribute in killing a tiger. Switching over to the Grant now as I'm a top hat. I'm honestly not even uh, convinced that the Grant is the better choice than the Matilda here. gets away. He's fine though. Don't know Matilda. Or the Crusader, you know. We've seen a lot of players have a lot of success with the Crusader and playing just like massing them up, doing big flanking maneuvers against the Tiger instead of trying to fight it head to head. If you're not like heavily invested into like a lot of support weapons and heavy tanks already, it's definitely worth considering that composition instead. So it can be a bit more difficult to play that if you're up against this AT loiter, since these planes basically don't miss even a very, very fast tank like the Crusader. The Crusaders you know, just take so much damage from them. But especially if the game's more dynamic, you expect your enemy hasn't maybe play, planted too many mines. So you're going to be quite free with your Crusaders. Worth considering at least. Let's get a little bit higher up the hill here if he wants this to be effective. The enemy has claimed a sector. Okay, second grant coming for Dharma Top Air. With the extra rate of fire, they can We're do some pretty big damage. Point. Though, you know. Kind of limited in their mobility, so trying to use them like head-on when they're two AT guns can often be quite difficult. 
Luckily though, the AT guns don't have a lot of VET at this stage. They're both like VET 2. Something more to worry about. He's coming in. Cancel the grenades, I think. It probably wouldn't even be worth it with three grenades. Unless they're absolutely guaranteed to hit. Couple of T-gun shots popping off there. Now they are climbing up to Vet. Two. Quite a few mines popping off armor top hat, so there was quite a few down this side of the map. Something to consider. Has picked up a second sapper though. Good for just repairs, if nothing else. The frontline sectors are ready to be barraged at the first sign of enemy activity, Commander. <laughs> Is the enemy gonna have chaos or something? What's he doing? You retrieved this pea green as well. I for sure would have kept that high muni before retreating it. There's another rifle made avoided there with the pea greens. Here they come. Rolling on down here with a British armored train. Definitely want to be leading the way with a engineer with a sweeper if possible, given. Quite a few mines down here not too long ago. And the grants are definitely a wiping threat against this much, this much firepower against the infantry. Oof. Greens. One more shot from the steward and it's enough to wipe. Tiger's lumbering its way across here. But of course, you know. Our top its force, more mobile. France quite a lot faster than the Tiger, and the enemy is quite reliant on his AT guns moving around as well. Okay, here comes the loiter of enemy, and it's quite deep. He's playing quite conservative with the Tiger, though, at the start of the fight, instead of just charging in here. In spite of his good position, I think he's too... too safe. He just, like charged in here with the tiger he could have knocked out a lot of stuff and you feel pretty safe when you're in a circle in the loiter circle still maybe once the enemy vehicles have gotten out of the circle you can disengage then but he played too safe tiger was still very healthy as long as his front alarm is facing up the right way he should have gone in for more there I suppose he probably feels a bit safer because he's still got enough munitions for another one. So he's just got to wait for the cooldown again. He didn't need that loiter to win him the game. But either way, I think he... Didn't uh, get the most out of it. So I'm using the med truck to do some capping there. So it means he's got that rapid advance, speed boost, and capture on his vehicles. So he's definitely been investing into some of those DAC armory upgrades, which help out a lot. And now he's gone for a P4 call on with the assault beam as well. Sure pops the night vehicle. So draining from our top hat again. Couple squads out here waiting on the edge, maybe hoping to catch these AT guns out of position. It's a mine over here, nearly Gurkha's death. We've a hundred points left. Two AT guns now, and that's basically all of Armour Top Hat's army is right here in this zone. Oh, he hit his own mine, I think it is. Oh, that's disastrous for enemy. What is the tiger even aiming at, dude? What was it aiming at just then? Hello? 
You didn't put her on prioritized vehicles. It looks like he was trying to aim at the infantry or something. That was crazy. Either way, both grunts do go down thanks to the double AT guns. So it's not shockingly bad for enemy. But Tiger's dead. And both AT guns now decrewed as well. It's up to Armand Top Hat whether he wants to consider trying to cap or kill these, but definitely do not leave them behind. That would be the biggest mistake of all. So he's got the order appears as well, so he's capping and appearing at the same time. Look. Here he's noticed this on his retreat. Two AT guns still up for grabs. You could send his med truck out there to recruit them. Huge mistake for Armored Top Cat that he it didn't immediately do something about these. The enemy have taken our territory. Victory point under enemy and here he control. goes. Enemies coming up here with the mid truck. Pops the recruit button. He's got one on the back. Just has to wait for the cooldown for the next one. Maybe he's even got a crit with these Panzer Pies. Yeah, that's just... Oh, that's a titanic mistake from Armour Top Hat. It's like 500 manpower and he's just saved right here. Maybe at least, maybe 400 manpower. Oh, hits him with the tread shot as well. Oh, but the steward goes down. Those double AT guns coming back to bite on the top hat. Otherwise, that could have been a kill. It was looking good. Stolen AT guns. Have other, oh, the recovered AT guns have other ideas. And quite a few mines. Was, no, that's a P3 getting over here. The Enemy. Oh, another mine goes off. But he's regretting not having a sweeper out. Don't know if he's got them upgraded actually, but on that particular sapper. He put it away to, for a fight. The enemy is trying to take a point from us. Just trying to cap. Stick around for the decap. No, the P3 jams it. What's coming up? Double AT guns and the P4 is right around the corner though. Double good AT guns though, also right next door. A lot of sight and shot blockers around here though can make it awkward, even with the hill. Sometimes cause problems with a Attack round shots, especially. He's got another tiger out enemy now. Look at the army size differential. On the top hat, close to getting another ground tower. But imagine if enemy had like, like 14 population less with two fewer AT guns. Oh my goodness. P3 dead up here in the blink of an eye. Wow. Okay, well he gets one back there now. Oh, the P4 though having an awkward time getting stuck on the VP flag. Unable to chase for the wipe. The truck coming in to do the capping again. It's good thinking for enemy. You're a little bit strapped for capping units and you don't need any healing in your base in some instances in the game. Why not? In this case, he kind of does need a bit of healing on these squads, but he's sort of run out to it anyway. There's that tiger. Tank trap, though, blocks one of the shots. Double AT guns lining up, though. That was like, oh, I better get out of here. Somehow getting rear arm hit from the front. So the top hat got the team weapon training now. Yes. So that's, that's a big one. 
20% more rate of fire on the AT guns. Matters a lot. And like all things considered, army versus army, they look like pretty similar up top, right? Obviously the Tigers a bit heavier than uh, a Grant, but compositions look pretty similar. And he does have enough for another loiter though, that's up his sleeve. Armour top hat though's got the air burst ready to go if he can find these AT guns again. Capping on the edge with the P4 though. Be a little bit careful with the tiger. The yeah. P4 support. And throw smoke in here to jam the cat for as long as possible. One of the grants dispatched over to that side. The other one's still getting repaired. AT guns advancing. The green's getting some damage in. Attack round trying to follow them through the smoke. Here comes the grant. Tiger's armor holding up well against the AT gun, so I think they get more concentration of Vet 3, don't they? Oh boy, the mid truck snared, forgotten about over here from enemy, and then the Tiger getting stuck over here, somehow exposing his rear armor, getting stuck on the rock. Getting a bit hairy for enemy, he decides to smoke just to make sure he doesn't take too much damage there before escaping from the ground, but me. Has lost control of this VP, so no drain for armor top hat right now. And the AT gun positioning of oh, enemy hasn't been that strong for the last like five or so minutes. Because like the Grants haven't taken that much damage. Gotta rebuild his med truck as well. That is very painful for Africa Core in the late game. Even for the command tank, I wonder if it would have been better to go for that other ability that gives you resources when you kill stuff. If you've got enough munitions to use that and that, it could have been pretty good. Before a little bit slow getting out of here. He's got the road though, and he's got the speed buff. Still takes a walloping amount of damage. There he goes. Don't know if he knows about this squad, but if he did, he should definitely come down here and try and wipe this with the tiger first. So we've got plenty of VPs. There's the enemy. Oh, yep, he sees it. Air burst onto the capture circle. Tiger misses its shot. Doesn't get the wipe there. I'm a little bit surprised. Usually the tiger would get the kill. Drives into the air burst here. And drives out of it. I think air burst is pretty bad against tanks though. It's quite bad penetration. Oh, that's Overwatch. Okay, he's gone for perimeter monitor and air burst. I was a bit confused. I thought I saw some other shells in there as well, but I didn't notice. Maybe the enemy has also not noticed. He needs to stay mobile here. He jumps right onto the edge of the capture circle. I think that may still target the zone after it's been decapped as well, though. You need to double check that. Anyway, he has been draining out on the VPs really fast. We're losing a fuel Even without the manpower cheats for Armour Top Hat, Africa Core, you know, just having, as I was saying, like, higher population costs really taxes your manpower in the late game. He's doing some major work. He's slow bringing the second AT gun in enemy. This one seemed to miss quite a few shots, so... Huge amount of damage done on the Africa Core tanks. And the enemy's very reliant on these tanks because his infantry is also quite weak. The top hat coming back in. P4 is making a play. Not quite getting the kill, but he brings in the loiter behind this. Tiger's now mobilized. 
knocks that out. Tiger's making a play, gets round beside the AT gun, knocks it out with one hit. Imagine the uh, gun shield wasn't working there. T-Gun up here decrewed. This is a yeah, good situation to use the VET-1 on the p beams for sure. Tiger sticking around here to kill this. Bringing in the airburst again. Don't think enemies noticed. Surviving still. Tiger's going in for more. Looking to get around the side. Grant's overhead guard in the far VP. Tiger looking for the decrew on the AT gun. Needs to get him with his last shot. And he does. Huge. Section trying to come up here with the sneer. Two AT grenades might even kill the Tiger here. The extra damage from the Vet 2. Yeah, Tiger's going to go down. Might not even have needed the uh, extra damage from the Vet 2. Not sure. Can be hard to read sometimes. And here jamming the capture. Capping over here as well. Grant over here running amok though. Completely dominating this side of the map. Tiger's dead, it's going to be very hard. He needs to get this mid truck away alive though, can't afford to lose that. I believe this can't self-appear itself either, so... I have to actually spend some resources. Ooh! The assault greens that are down this side end up dying, that's a little bit unlucky I think for enemy. He needs to recruit this AT gun though, because the grants are coming in fast and he hasn't done it yet. He's going to go try cap with the P3. But I don't think he's got the uh, capping power to close the show here. Grant's in here, just nuking the infantry. And enemy throws in the towel. So, yeah. Generally, I'd say better early game for enemy, knocking out that first Stuart really put him in the lead. I mean, Top Hat was struggling for the next few minutes, but the P3 flame tank didn't really do that much. Even on this map, which is, you know, probably like the biggest 1v1 map, which is, you know, means it's relatively easy to dodge the AT guns by switching from side to side with a reasonably fast tank like with the P3. He still, like, didn't accomplish that much with that flame of P3, and that kind of allowed Armored Top Hat back into the game. On top of this, maybe kind of wasting his Stuka anti-tank loiters. You know that. Strictly they weren't wastes, but the, he could have done so much more, like that one over here with the Tiger. He could have charged in here and killed everything with that Tiger, I think, but too timid. And eventually comes back to bite him in the late game where the Africa Corps pop gap and uh, issues setting in. We went for Armour Top Hat when he decrewed both these AT guns up here and didn't kill them off. They completely let enemy back in the game. Huge mistake that. Huge. But still able to close the show late. Enemy struggling to make the right moves in the ultra late stages to try and drain out those last 36 VPs. And just generally, like a little bit slow bringing in like the second AT gun to some of these fights. Let Armour Top Hat have it too early, and Armour Top Hat with all those upgrades. You know, a huge rate of fire on his AT guns and his grants. Doing a surprising amount of damage in a short amount of time, thanks to that. Well, anyway guys, wrap on that. If you like good game cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all for the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.